all children will have a bright future. A child's developing biological and psychological systems are shaped by the environmental, psychosocial and behavioural risk and protective factors to which they are exposed. Poverty, poor quality housing and limited access to healthcare can therefore have a serious negative impact on the development of young children. It is clear, however, that this relationship is complex and involves many interacting factors. The amount of money families have and the communities in which they live can impact on their access to resources such as food, healthcare, education and housing. These factors all play a part in determining a child's living standards. Around a fifth of children in Scotland are living in poverty and we know that there is a link between experiencing poverty during the early years and health inequalities into adulthood. The impact on health into adulthood occurs through the accumulation and interaction of risk and protective factors over time. Reduced cognitive development can have a major impact in later life, with school learning, with qualifications and with acquiring the skills for employment. It's easy to see that poverty and negative early life experiences can severely limit later life opportunities. However, these inequalities are not inevitable. They are the result of factors in society, factors which we can change if we have the will and means to do so. Effective interventions for child poverty include addressing issues such as lack of work, quality of housing, and basic educational achievement. Interventions that address the associated health impacts of poverty include actions that maximise the amount of money and resources a family has access to and offering intensive support to those already experiencing or most likely to experience problems. That's what this resource is all about, describing interventions that can have a positive impact on the health and development of children who are born into or experience difficult life circumstances in their early life. This resource focuses on actions within services designed to support specific vulnerable children and families. Interventions can originate with the health service, social services, community and criminal justice agencies, local authorities and all other organisations that are involved in supporting children and parents. Knowing the factors that impact on children's development and increase their vulnerability to poorer social, emotional and cognitive outcomes helps to make sure that children and families at greatest risk get the support that they need. What are these risk factors? Studies have shown that the common risk factors in the UK are low income, poor housing and parental health, particularly maternal health problems. It's important to bear in mind that the link between the following factors and the increased risk of poor outcomes is complex. It doesn't necessarily mean that these factors cause problems, rather that this association may be a result of socio-economic circumstances or other structural inequalities. Risk of varying degrees is increased among children who are exposed to parental drug and alcohol problems, who live in families with relationship problems and conflict, including domestic abuse. Who are born to parents under the age of 18, whose parents have low educational attainment, whose parents are or were looked after children, who are in a single parent family. Who are from certain black and minority ethnic backgrounds, who are of low birth weight, who have physical disabilities or have speech, language and communication difficulties. It is vital to understand that not all children exposed to these factors will experience problems and that some children who don't experience these risk factors can also have problems. For this reason, practitioner knowledge and experience is key to assessing the needs and risks for individual children and families. In contrast, 
The factors that protect children against developing social, emotional and cognitive difficulties in the early years are, perhaps not surprisingly, almost a mirror image of those that put them at risk. Evidence from early years research highlights two key messages. The first is that the factors leading to health inequalities are complex and interlinked. And the second is that interventions with at-risk families and children can result in positive outcomes. Current service provision in the early years consists of two tiers. The first tier is universal services, that is, services that are available to all families, such as health and education services. Staff providing these universal services can identify families and children with additional risks. Making sure all parents and children get access to this universal care is therefore of paramount importance. At the second tier, families identified as being at additional risk are progressively moved into enhanced or additional services, a process known as progressive universalism. These enhanced or additional services will vary from authority to authority. They may be delivered by suitably trained professionals working in universal services or specialists, but all should be designed to ensure that vulnerable children and their parents receive the support they need. All this is aimed at achieving the maximum positive impact on the development of young children. Although children continue to grow and develop throughout childhood and adolescence, in this resource, we are concerned with the period of a child's development until the age of five. Early years services are designed to improve health and well-being not just for young children, but also for their parents, from the earliest stages of pregnancy throughout the child's early years. The inequalities and problems experienced by children and families are complex and interlinked, but to ensure the messages in this resource are communicated clearly, they have been divided into the following topics. Pregnancy and birth, postnatal health and well-being, social, emotional and cognitive development in early years. Unintentional injuries, domestic abuse and drugs, alcohol and smoking. There's also a section on ethics and evaluation. <laughs>